Welcome back to Whittling for Beginners, Whittling with Salty. This time we're going to put all of our skills together that we have learned so far, and we're going to work on carving the ball in the cage. Now in order to do that, this ball is going to have to be a little bit smaller than the one that we carved on the end of the stick. And how do we figure out the size? Well, that's not too difficult. On the, en on, the end of a, on the end of one of your sticks, well, either end, draw your little quarter-inch square sticks that are the cylinder, the, the, the cage on the outside corners. The largest that your ball can be is the distance between the two out corner uh, posts. In this case, it's 7 eighths of an inch. Now, round it off, it could be a little bit bigger, but we'll stick with 7 eighths of an inch. Now, the smallest that it could possibly be is 5 eighths of an inch, otherwise it will slip out between the posts. So you have a little bit of slack from 7 eighths of an inch to 5 eighths of an inch. So we'll draw a little circle the size of, of seven eighths of an inch, and we would lay that out on our on our stick. We have drawn the quarter inch corners all the way around. So we lay our, our circle pattern right in the center and mark and that will mark over the top of your corner post, of course, but that's immaterial. You're not going to carve there anyway. Mark that all the way around. Now at the top of the circle pattern, make, make a straight mark and, of course, a stop mark up here where your spacer is. And the first project then is to empty out that space in between. Everything in between on the top has to be emptied out. To do that, we'll have to finish drawing our quarter inch mark on the, on the on the side of our stick. And we would sketch, make a little mark here as our edge. We want to get the top edge of our ball and lay it on there. Space it about in the center. And draw around it with your with your pencil, and taking your, your knife, make stop cuts. This one is partly done already, so make stop cuts and cut down uh, first cutting out the corners, just as we did before when we made our first attempt at doing interior carving. Carve down so that uh, you free up that that corner post. And we have to do the same thing here, just as we did in the, in the beginning. We'll make a stop cut on each end. And take out a little chip.
And take all the little chip. Another stop cut. Another slice. And another little chip. Just keep repeating the process, being careful not to not to take too big a chunk. Oh, we had a little accident there. See, the little piece broke out. It was not supposed to do that. That's one of those flaws in the wood that I was talking about before. Now, if this was a a good project, we would recover that piece and glue it back in before we went any farther. That's another reason to always hope, try to keep the top of your workbench fairly clean, because if you break something off and your wood chips are six inches deep, it's really hard to find something that's that small. If your workbench is fairly clean, then it's not too difficult. In this case, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. Now we do the same thing on the other end, finish cleaning this out, make our stop cut, our slice. And another slice, and we get down to where actually I, don't, I went too far there. I want to do the first one up here on the top of the wall. You could do it on the other on the other end too. It wouldn't make that much difference, except that you have to be very careful where you, where the center of the ball is that you don't cut too deep, so it's more prudent to empty out the top half above the ball first, and then the bottom half we can do later. Once you have those, those down, then, then it's a fairly simple task of making a slicing cut, taking out a chip, make another slicing cut, take out a chip, Make another slicing cut. Mm. And there we are through. See, now we're 
And then we would do the same thing on the final side. And then finally, of course, what we have to do is just uh, chip out the rest of this by making little stop cuts on either end. And you can clean out that space above the above the ball. small chips and just keep working away at it from side to side. to clean out this for these other corners anyway, so we might as well do it now. that down. Then you have the corner free. Before you know it, you have that whole piece out of there.
This is kind of putsy work. It takes a long time because you, you just have to get a little bit out at a time and you kind of have to break things loose. And you don't want to spoil your carving as you're doing that, so. You have to be a little bit careful. But that's the key to doing good work all the way through is to be careful. Not much left. We just have to clean out the corner here and we can start working on our, on our ball. Actually, as you get more skilled, you won't need this much room. You could probably, in this space here, you could probably carve two or three balls, one on top of the other. But when we're beginning, and it's nice to have a little bit of extra room. So we learned how, how the knife works and how the wood lays. corners on the now we have the whole top cleaned out and at this point we'll have to take our pencil and kind of guess how carefully mark an X right in the center that will be the center of the top of our ball. And of course, that's easily done because you can sight across from post to post. What we're going to do now is to start to work on our, on rounding the ball. And we have our pattern. I'm going to outline it here, just the corners that we can work on. going to be that all, all the way around so we can kind of cut the corner down like we did at the, when we started on the end of the stick with our first ball. Do the same thing all the way around. Take a little bit at a time.
It wouldn't hurt at all if you if you did like you did on your first ball, if you made a, a center line right across the ball so that you wouldn't get confused and cut too far down on any one side. So we'll, we will uh, Just, you work the top of the ball just the way you did on the end of the stick, except that you have corners that you're going to have to clean out. And that's not going to be too difficult because that, as, as we get on do the bottom, then we'll begin to round the ball in this direction also. When we start on the bottom half of the ball, then we will be working a little bit differently. We'll make a stop cut on the bottom. We'll clean out our bottom corners just like we did up above. And then we will start, you know, cutting, cutting the bottom of the ball and working it down all, all the way around so that uh, We, we cut down toward the center so that we, the ball is sitting on a peg afterwards. You can actually cut that corner completely loose from the bottom of the ball all the way to the, to the stop so that the ball is sitting on a big fat pig. And we do the same thing then on the other, on the other side. Just work that down. But I think you should be, you should have the idea how you do that. Then you do the same thing on the bottom half. When you get these cleaned out, then you, then you would start uh, carving your ball. And as you, as you round it off, then you begin to carve down so that you take off that peg. You can all, don't forget to use your gauge. You can reach in there and you can gauge whether or not that's getting round and you can do the same thing on the, on the sides. As, as you're rounding that ball off, if you get, when you get to the bottom and the top, And 
you can mark those off. And from the center of the ball, you can begin to round that off. Then it's easy enough to get in there and round off the top and the bottom of your ball. Just in case you're, uh, you don't get this done by the next show, we will uh, be able to finish up our ball. Clean out the corners first, and always, when you're doing this, and then you have a good solid stop so that you don't break anything out. And so, we're coming up to the end. We'll have to finish this carving the ball project in our, in our last session. But if you want to get started on it, work carefully. Take your time. Use the same skills that you learned on the first few projects and you will not have any trouble. So until next time, be careful, keep your knife sharp, and we'll see you there.